This isn't really intended to be a headphone review video, but um, who knows? It may turn into that because I'm going to give these guys a little bit of a listen. But really what the video is about is I'm curious to see how the performance changes after they're um, broken in a little bit. So I bought my girlfriend's son a halfway decent headphone amplifier. There's just no way the amplifier built into a little phone or a tablet is going to crank out decent sound. Well, he had some, I don't know, skull candy or beats or some kind of, you know, consumer uh, over the ear headphones or maybe they were on the ear but regardless you know they seemed like they were okay um, but it turns out at some point in, in the past couple of months they got destroyed so I bought him this headphone amplifier and he doesn't have any um, even even that level of headphones so I, I wanted to get him something but I didn't want to spend a ton of money because I already spent more than I really intended to Recently, I got these Bear Dynamic DT990 Pros. These are the 250 ohm version, but I've been really impressed with these. It does make a difference with me in the booth, but these are what I use for quick mixes, and this is what I listen to music when I just want to enjoy music. These have become my favorites. They're not super, super high end, but they're definitely not cheap. And I think the performance is excellent. Uh, they're a little bit bassy, but you can kind of adjust to that. And so enter the Samson SR850. So these things were like 25 bucks. I'll stick a link down there. Amazon Prime, 25 bucks, free shipping, you know, the deal. Um, might have been 26, might have been 24. Uh, it changes anyhow, but I figured before I give them to him, I'm going to go ahead and break them in. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to kind of do a little experiment to see if, or see how much the performance changes after they're broken in. So what I'm going to do is record some pink noise onto a Neumann, um, what's the model number on this guy? TLM 103 microphone. And I am going to record some pink noise and and then break them in for, I don't know, 48 hours. I keep reading online. We'll give that a go. And then I'm going to repeat the recording of the pink noise. But what I want to see is I'm curious to see if the, the response is a little bit different after they break in. So... We'll give that a go. Like I said, this isn't a review. I haven't even tried these guys out yet, so I have no impressions. Uh, but before I do anything, I want to get them on there and, and get the recording of the before. Pink noise response curve. Sorry, I got ink on my hands. I'm going to give you a quick look here at what I'm doing. Um, I'm using a mono signal, so it's just it's just going to be coming in on the right side, and I'm literally placing it right there against the screen, and that should be pretty repeatable. I really don't think I'll have trouble getting it to be close enough position. There'll be no sound coming out here. All the the sound will be coming out there. I've got it panned all the way all the way to the right, and then I'm just gonna record it, and everything flat, of course. And I'm just going to compare it afterwards. Sorry, I hope it's not annoying having that other screen there, but I like to be able to see what you're seeing. So I've already done this with the uh, Barrow Dynamics 
and I created a little folder here, a bus. And so I've got the before and after. And what I did is I just set the level, the boost to where at 500 hertz, I'm right here at this minus 48 dB mark. And then I did the same thing on a repeated recording, just so I had kind of a before and after where I reset it up here on the microphone. I changed the, the headphone output on the mixer and then I reset it back to an approximation. And it was pretty close, but like here on the uh, pre, Example, I used 3.78 dB of gain, but 3.06 on the after. So there was a little bit of a difference, but I took a couple of points here at 50 hertz, 100 hertz, and 200 hertz, and matched them with the other one. And it, it was, you know, just me pointing at it, it was within 0.1 dB. So the before and after comparison definitely proved out and that's really all that's for it's kind of a, those are already broken in and they were done back to back but it just proved that that I could have a, a repeatable experiment so I created a um, Samson SR850 bus I've got the little before and basically of course it'd be it'd be really helpful to actually plug the headphones in so I'm going to turn down the, the monitors here <clears throat> so there's no bleed. So this is it. It's panned fully right. And all right, here we go. All right, I've got my two minutes of pink noise there. I will break these suckers in and repeat it. I'm curious, though. Well, at 100 hertz, we're about minus 34 dB. I'm going to call it minus 35. So if I go back to the, the bare dynamics just for a super quick comparison there, we've already kind of normalized it. So let's see at 100, we were minus 35. So these are, these are definitely basier at this point. So I can tell you right now, at least right off the bat, though, Samson's going to be a, a little more shrill, a little more high-endy. And it's, um, wow, about 8 dB louder. Maybe not quite 7, 7.5 dB louder at, at 100 hertz. But um, but anyway, it's, it's a similar shape, but... The Samson's brighter with uh, with less of a pronounced bass hump here. But that's the part I'm looking to see if that will change after they break in. All right, so these Samson SR850 headphones have been getting a bit of a workout. It's been about 16 hours, so I listened for several hours over the course of the last two days. And they were uh, playing a playlist of music for about 16, or excuse me, about 12 hours a day. So about, I don't know, all told about 15 to 16 hours. I think that's good enough to see whether or not it makes a difference um, doing the break-in or, or whatever. And I did a little bit of reading. I'm real prone to reinventing the wheel. So there's certain things that I love to research that are other things that I really just like to try for myself. And this was kind of one of them. I knew there'd be a, uh, some information out there about headphone break-in. What's interesting is there's not a lot of information. Uh, there's one article out there that everybody seems to quote. And what's pretty fascinating is people who think that there's really no reason to break them in. They use that article to support that view and people who think there is a reason to break them in use that same article to support that view. Let's see if they respond a little different. 
All right, we've got two minutes of pink noise. So, let's see how they did. Well, I'm really glad I did this little experiment and not altogether surprising, but interesting results. And I'll show you, I'll overlay the before curve this is like a uh, an averaging going on um, this white line and that's really what I used rather than obviously this pink noise is there's some randomness to it it's jumping around I didn't try to follow that but I used these uh, averages and just pointing at various points and getting the numbers the, the typical change was like 0.2 DB 0.4 DB something like that um, there was one spot where it was it was 1 DB that was at 2k and uh, somewhere around that range, there started to be a, a difference. The after break-in, there was a 1 dB increase at 2K, which is still not huge. But then after that, there's still this little dip, but it's a tiny, tiny little sliver of frequencies, and it's present in before and after. But this section right here, before this little peak, is it's there's less of a dip and the peak itself is reduced that disparity is narrowed quite a bit so once again the before and if I just kind of roughly point down here it's like minus 48.7 if I kind of roughly point up here it's it's about 10 DB and after I'm really eyeballing it it's about five or six dB. So that's the most notable thing, plus this roll off. So in, in that, you have to look at the average um, curve, but this is the after, and it rolls off pretty, pretty steep. So I'm gonna give you a real quick demonstration of how this particular set of headphones, how the performance changed, and you, you can hear the difference for yourself. So here's how I did it. I created a, a another instance of the EQ uh, plug-in and the inserts on this channel and let me see if I can kind of show that so here's the before and again the key the key areas are kind of in here but also really this this rolled off part on the after See the response really dropped off quite a bit here and this part looks quite a bit different. Then if I put that extra EQ in place, the shape mimics the other. It's not perfect. See the drop off? This smoothed out, which is what we noticed in the change in performance. Kick it back on. The disparity between the lows and the highs is very evident again and that roll off pretty much went away. It's not perfect, but it's a real close approximation to this curve looks almost exactly like the other one. You'll hear the before five seconds, and then the after for five seconds, and then the before five seconds, and then the after break in for five seconds again. Then I'm gonna do the same thing, but where I'm gonna put the before in one channel, and the after on the other channel, and then I'm gonna swap them. And I'll do that four times. But I think the bottom line is you'll hear a change and you'll hear a difference. And it's much more subtle, obviously, when you're listening to actual music. So will headphone performance change after they are broken in? Well, 
I just have this one sample of a fairly inexpensive set of headphones and the data shows a change you can hear it with your ears but look here, here's to me it's a common sense issue you have wear with mechan it's a it's a mechanical system here it's an electromechanical device and with mechanical stuff you have wear and you have changes in material properties and with these guys I'm guessing wear isn't much of an issue certainly not in, in handfuls of hours but material issues I would imagine are, are a factor here um, you have pliable flexible components and you have probably some metal films there, there are just a number of things that is, these components move and flex there's work hardening there's other things that I don't know the, the specific materials involved and but mechanical devices tend to change performance and interestingly because we're talking about frequency issues um, and vibrational stuff when mechanical components are used one of the biggest things you notice is you notice changes in resonant frequencies and changes in vibrations and that's exactly what we're talking about here. So I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that you can detect, certainly with equipment, a change in performance. But I think it's probably possible even with high-end headphones, and I'd love to try that out, and hopefully we'll be able to here soon. But I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to, to detect and even hear a difference. So in kind of the analytical realm here yes there's a difference in performance almost certainly but definitely with this particular set of headphones but in any practical sense should you break your headphones in before enjoying them just start using them it's pretty subtle you're not going to be able to hear them back to back the the before and after the performance is just going to evolve and it's pretty subtle however if you want to do critical listening comparison between a brand new set of headphones that you got and your favorite pair of headphones or some other um, set of studio monitors or any other thing that you want to compare, you need to let them work a bit and let their performance settle out so that you get a representation of how they're going to perform long term. Because after that initial use, and I don't know what that magic amount of time is, but after some initial amount of use, they're going to they're gonna settle into a performance characteristic that's probably, if they're made well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay fairly stable for a while. And that's what you would want to compare. Not this initial right out of the box thing. So if high-end headphone companies are working their transducers a bit before they assemble these things, maybe this doesn't really apply. But I'm not familiar with anything like that. And so that's why I said in the title, yes, there's a difference. And no, because in any practical sense, there isn't. But yes, there is a difference. And so if that difference matters to you for any reason, then break them in. But anyway, for most of us, just use them. This was kind of a fun one because I was really curious about this and these are the types of things that I like to test out and prove to myself and uh, if I can come up with a way of doing it with equipment that I already have and in this case I felt like I had a high enough quality microphone and a decent enough setup that um, I could at least kind of characterize to with some amount of accuracy the the change and it it worked i felt like it worked so uh i hope to be able to try this again with some better headphones and see if that um holds true but i imagine it will but uh please do the whole like and subscribe thing if you find this kind of stuff to be interesting at all and i appreciate you watching